Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Dayan Chita. Lojong is a, a practice to gradually cultivate the sudden awakening experience until our minds are fully awakened. Uh, it helps us carry the sudden awakening out into the world. So tonight I'll discuss point two of the seven points of Lojong, the main practice, which is training in bodhicitta, and specifically the slogans that have helped me the most. Slogans two and five. Number two, regard all dharmas as dreams. And number five, rest in the nature of alaya. And alaya is awareness, the present moment. So let's start with slogan two, regard all dharmas as dreams. Dharmas in this sense is not the teaching, but they're things, phenomena, uh, mental factors, anything we can experience, perceive, etc. It seems important to me that this isn't saying dharmas are dreams. This is a simile, not a metaphor or an analogy. Regard all dharmas as dreams. Dharmas are like dreams. So what are dreams like? Well, they're impermanent, temporary, rise and pass away. Like all dharmas, they have no self-nature. They're empty in the Buddhist sense. They're often hazy. Their perspectives are usually limited, partial, incomplete. They're also karmically conditioned, both by the karma we've generated and inherited. Also, dharmas are, are stories our minds tell that have a tangential relationship to reality. They dependently arise, have causes and conditions, and are more or less related to the world outside the dream, interdependent with that world. But even though we can try to interpret the dreams, we never know for sure if our interpretations are correct. Those interpretations are also just stories about the world. Now, this isn't to reject the world, though. <clears throat> Indeed, to accept it fully is identical with true awakening. Dharmas are real. They're real dreams. Uh, dreams are real. They're real dreams. Indeed, dreams are dharmas. Dreams have effects on the world outside the dream. Nightmares can continue to frighten us even after we wake up. Dreams, like ideas, have consequences. But dreams aren't really real. To comfort someone who's had a nightmare, we might say, it's only a dream. So in a way, dreams are both real and not real, and that they're not really, and that they're really dreams and have effects outside the dream. But those effects are still based on empty illusions that disappear upon awakening. Thus, they're neither real nor quite not real. So to regard dharmas as dreams could mean to interpret all our experiences, perceptions, conceptions, beliefs, thoughts, actions, our cravings and aversions, our pain, our views and worldviews, prejudices and ideologies, as if they were temporary and impermanent, as if they're nothing substantial to grasp or defend, as if our perspective is extremely limited and partial, as if we're never going to fully comprehend everything that exists, as if they could be wrong, that whatever's out there, we're only getting a tiny bit of it. So what we experience is the story our mind tells about the world, a story that has some relationship to the world outside our minds, sometimes closer, sometimes farther away. But there there's never, uh, as far as we can tell, a complete alignment between the stories uh, of the mind and what we're experiencing. <clears throat> so dreams, flawed interpretations of the world, limited perspectives, incomplete information, a lack of ultimate control, stories our minds tell, insubstantial things arising and passing away. This is what dreams are like. Trying to look at all our experiences that way helps us detach from ego and self and views and hopefully awaken a bit. The self is too just a dream. <clears throat> so the goal isn't mindfulness, but mindlessness, right? Wujin, no mind, the awakened mind uh, that functions in the world of dharmas as if they were dreams. The fully awakened mind learns to regard all dharmas as dreams, a basic awareness of what's happening and how to, how to act without attaching itself to these reified dreams. Okay, but who's doing the regarding when we regard all dharmas as dreams? So here I turn to the slogan, rest in the nature of alaya, or rest in the nature of awareness. It's the awakened mind resting in the nature of awareness. So let's extend the, the, the dream analogy to lucid dreams. Uh, psychologist Paul Foley uh, proposed seven different conditions for a lucid dream, at least according to the Wikipedia site I read on this. So seven conditions. One, awareness of the dream state. Two, awareness of the capacity to make decisions. Three, awareness of memory functions. Four, awareness of self. Five, awareness of the dream environment. Six, 
awareness of the meaning of the dream, and seven, awareness of concentration and focus. These, condi these conditions work well with the analogy between dharmas and dreams. Lucid dreamers are aware of dreaming even as they're dreaming. The nature of awareness is like the lucid dreamer. There are many sub-minds competing for attention and dominance within our larger mind. And the sub-mind I'm thinking of is that basic state of preconceptual awareness, as preconceptual as it's possible to, to get anyway, while still being able to function in the world. We call it the awake dreamer. Uh, I usually call it the watcher. So as, as the lucid dreamer is aware that dreams are just dreams as they dream, the watcher is aware of dharmas as dreams while still being able to move, choose, function in the dream. It's the mind less detached watcher regarding dharmas as dreams. The watcher who isn't asleep, isn't dreaming, but awake, perhaps even awakened. Awake people regard all dharmas as lucid dreamers regard dreams nothing to get attached to. So resting in the nature of awareness, regarding all dharmas as dreams, are general slogans that are always applicable. Like Wadu, they're, they're methods for taking the meditative states we might achieve on the cushion, off the cushion, and out into the world, but less intentional. Instead of focused, in the focused concentration of Wadu, Lojong slogans are more about open monitoring, to use two common distinctions in the psych literature. We can always uh, consider the ways that our experiences are just stories our minds tell, always subject to interpretation, always partial and perspectival. Whatever we encounter, we can remember this. Is it a provocative statement on social media, a possible insult from someone, someone cutting us off in traffic, disturbing thoughts or emotions, physical pain? Always remembering that these are like dreams, just stories of the mind helps us detach from the stories to stop being harmed or offended by them. And when the mind rests undisturbed in the way, nothing in the world can offend. So the biggest story might be the illusion of central position, the belief that the universe centers on us, ourselves. Ourselves also dreams. They're dharmas. They exist, and yet they don't exist. So when we constantly challenge the stories our minds tell and start to see them as merely stories, like dreams, maybe true, maybe not, probably never absolutely completely accurate, our consciousness changes. We slowly cultivate epistemic modesty, intellectual humility, the understanding of just how limited our understanding actually is. We realize how vastly ignorant we are, uh, but this is beneficial rather than debilitating. Uh, with writer David Loy, uh, we might agree that the world is made of stories, that it's stories all the way down. And fully realizing this for ourselves frees us from the delusion that our stories are something more metaphysically foundational, that they're somehow a mirror of reality, even that they're more important than other people's stories. They're all just stories. And removing this delusion helps free us from craving and aversion, from self and other, from dukkha more generally. We can gradually learn to move through the world with fewer prejudices and preconceptions, fewer stories we confuse for the way things really are, just like lucid dreamers. The uh, pithy slogans, uh, these regard all dharmas as dreams, uh, rest in the nature of Alaya. These pithy slogans are my shortcut to remember, uh, always to see uh, impermanence, emptiness, dependent arising, to gradually detach from views and ego, reduce my own suffering, open myself to the suffering of others. So I'll end with a Zen Sutra that gives us the same reminder in slightly different words, the Diamond Sutra. So here, here's Red Pine's translation. As a lamp, a cataract, a star in space, an illusion, a dewdrop, a bubble, a dream, a cloud, a flash of lightning. View all created things like this. So I see Lojong, it can serve as a reminder to do that, to always rest in the nature of Alaya, regard all dharmas as dreams, view all created things like that. Thank you for listening.